I want to sing very old song. Hello, welcome. This is your new moon newsletter for the month of Cancer in 2020, going from July 21st until August 18th. I uh, hope this finds you happy and healthy. And um, I'm coming to you from a little town on the coast of Spain, just north of Barcelona. Uh, and so I want to start off this month by addressing uh, a few uh, errors that have come in past newsletters. Uh, specifically, you know, it's mostly little things to do with nakshatras. And, and so like last month in the dates section, I said that this month's new moon would be in Punarvasu when in fact it is in Pushya. And so we'll talk about what that means in a moment, but I just wanted to name it because I've, I've gone back and looked and there's a couple little things like that that haven't been precisely accurate. And that really rattles my nerves and a really, it's probably the thing that makes me most nervous about uh, providing this offering is is to make mistakes and and I really uh, strive to be as accurate as possible and and so when that doesn't happen um, I, I, I that hurts uh, and and so I want to apologize and and just let you know I'm doing my best uh, to be as accurate as I can that's the whole whole purpose of this and um, in in last month's newsletter I shared a statement that was published by the Colorama Board, the Colorado Ayurvedic Medical Association, about the Black Lives Matter movement. I just wanted to reiterate that that's very much a collective statement. Um, that, was, that was a group effort that I put a lot of time and energy into as the communications director. I did the actual writing and sending of the newsletter, but, but very much a group effort. And, and I'm very proud to be a part of that board. So just wanted to clarify that in case there's any confusion. Um, and, and that all leads into what this month is all about, this new moon in Pushya Nakshatra, uh, which is in a nakshatra within the sign of Cancer. And, and this month is really all about nourishment and, and the archetypal mother, the, the moon rules Cancer. And the moon is, is the representative of the archetypal mother and that, that unconditional love that, that doesn't hold grudges, that is forgiving and benevolent and really just wants to nourish life. And um, so, so this, this sliver of the sky called Pushya is represented by the, the udder or the teat of a cow. And, and it's, there's, a, there's a story associated with it uh, where Brahaspati is a Vedic sage, a Vedic priest, uh, the, the sort of actualized quality of Jupiter. And, and so he's this great sage, this great guru, and his wife Tata is the most beautiful being in all creation. Except Tata falls in love with the moon and runs off with the moon and, and refuses to come back. And the universe is on the verge of collapsing and, and the gods are all up in arms and uh, refusing to go about their duties and this blasphemy of Tara running away from, from her most noble, benevolent husband. Um, so this is a big scandal. And she ultimately, before the universe shuts down, uh, returns to Brahaspati, but she is pregnant with the child of the moon, uh, who turns out to be the planet Mercury. And, and so the gods are saying to Brahaspati, you should banish this child. Like this is, this is not your child is out of wedlock. This is, this is blasphemy. And, and Brahaspati in his uh, benevolence, his graciousness, uh, forgiveness and wisdom, uh, accepts the child and raises Mercury as his own. And, and with full love and devotion as any parent would to their own child. And, and so this, this is, that is the story for this month. That, that, is, that energetic is what we uh, are invited to connect to 
during this these coming weeks. And, and so there's so much in that of, um, first of all, the graciousness and the forgiveness to um, receive those who have done harm uh, and, and to allow that sense of what is correct, what is proper, what, what is actually going to nourish life and forget the grudges, forget the uh, you did this wrong and, and I'm hurt because of this and, and connect to what is actually supportive of life and of benefit to all beings. And, and that's, that is challenging. That takes a lot of, of wisdom and integrity and, um, and, and attention to ourselves in order that we can, uh, nourish others, right? It's only because Brahaspati was so stable and confident and at peace within himself that he was able to order the world around him in such a way that it was creative of, of, of peace, that it generated goodness. Um, so, so yeah, there, that, that quality of forgiveness uh, is, is really prominent, but it, it's also the, the focus is the nurturance. It's like the forgiveness is almost a byproduct of the focus on nurturing that which is good. And, and so this is where we connect with the Divine Mother who loves all her children and and gives freely right and and is is just you know what do you need i will do everything i can to give it to you and and it, yeah this unconditional love this unconditional giving this this sense of like you know getting getting the um finding meaning and and significance and satisfaction out of nurturing others and giving to others providing for others and and that that is one of the archetypal qualities of the mother is to give everything she has in order to uh, allow her children to thrive. And so we are all children of the earth mother. Uh, we are all children of the, the cosmic mother. Uh, and, and so it's a good time to connect to that, you know, whether, however, however you do that through prayer, uh, through connection to nature. Um, but it, it is also an excellent time to honor the literal mothers in our lives. Uh, and, and in addition to that, to honor the maternal qualities within each and every one of us, uh, the, the practice of, of reparenting or parenting ourselves is, is, has been a profound, uh, benefit to my psychological life, um, and finding that maternal quality internally and, and how do I express motherly love in my day-to-day -day life? both in my internal dialogue and, and with the world around me? And, and what are the qualities of life that I am capable of nourishing? And, and what do I really, what am I willing to give unconditionally to? Uh, what, what can I support uh, with, with, my, with my gifts and my, my maternal instincts? Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's this new moon. Uh, there's a benevolent, very gentle quality about that, right? Um, and, and so then we have the full moon in Capricorn in Shravana Nakshatra that comes up on August 3rd. And, and so the Capricorn, the full moon is the counterbalancing moment to the new moon, right? So, so new moon in Cancer, exactly opposite in the Zodiac is Capricorn and that's ruled by Saturn, and, and it happens in uh, Shravana Nakshatra. Now, um, Capricorn is, is this counterbalance to, to Cancer, where Cancer, with the mother, that unconditional love, it, it has a sentimental quality, and this desire to just be loved, and, and have, why can't we all just get along, and, and, you know, if I'm not receiving love in return, if my kids don't love me, it, that's really, that's really hard place to be and what do I have to do to make them love me is, is this energetic that comes with cancer a lot of times. This sort of uh, emotional codependence is, is the less intelligent application of the Divine Mother. Um, so the, the counterbalancing intelligence to that is, is of Capricorn, which is very practical. Earth sign, very, um, you know, not to say cold hearted, but just very clear and practical and not, not sentimental at all the opposite of sentimental and, and yeah, very practical business-like. Uh, and, and so, um, 
Shravana nakshatra is this sliver of the sky. The word Shravana literally means to hear or hearing. And, and so it, and it's got to do with hearing the truth in spite of the imperfect language that others may choose to try to express themselves. So we, we, a lot of times we have to hear through people and, and you know, understand what they're trying to say in spite of what they said, if that makes sense. And, and I, I appreciate you doing that with me in these videos, right? I'm doing my best to explain, but it's, it's flawed. And, and so the, the challenge for all of us in, in uh, these ridiculous times that we live in is to figure out what is true in spite of what's being communicated and, and to really hear the, uh, the, the vibrational truth of what is being shared. And, and so that Shravana specifically has to do with um, with yeah, uh, sensing vibratory frequency. Uh, sound is the first subtle element to arise. And, and those vibrations, you know, we are all fundamentally vibratory beings. Uh, the latest in modern physics has shown us that um, there is no solid matter. It's just a dense conglomerate of vibrating particles, uh, which, which really, you know, is it a particle or is it a wave, right? It's, so, um, so yeah, sound waves are, are the carriers of a great deal of intelligence and really of all creation. And, and so this, this area, this guy has a lot of focus on manifestation and what are we using our vibratory frequencies to create and and those waves can carry all sorts of information and and with what information are we encoding our our vibratory frequency with right um yeah so so we want to it's it's a great time this this coming full moon august 3rd i think it's a monday uh, great time for prayer, uh, specifically in the form of mantra, singing, uh, kirtan, and uh, any way that you um, create sound. And and uh, it, it's also a great time to listen to your teachers, listen to uh, you know, get into your audio books, uh, listen to talks. Literally, like the voice of the teacher has has this uh, this frequency that just reading the words doesn't necessarily have. Right, the the intonation and and the pauses and the, the the there is this music to it, right? And and the silence is just as much a part of the music as the notes. And and so yeah, to connect with music and and the voice of the teacher and um, and to really tune into what we are creating through the sounds that we make is is a focus of of this area of the sky. So so that's that's this this full moon. And, um, yeah, uh, a big piece of that. So, um, what can we say? Yeah. So, uh, Shravana is ruled by Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu is the create, uh, the, the preserving force, right? So there's, there's three qualities of, of existence and there's creation preservation, existence, and then transformation or destruction. And, and so Lord Vishnu is this, this middle period that maintains the creation and keeps it all flowing in harmony. <clears throat> and so if we're going to sing in harmony, <clears throat> excuse me, we have to, first of all, be able to hit our note, but we also need to be able to listen to the other notes being sung or played. And, and so it is, it's not a stagnant thing, harmony. It, it, it's a dynamic, ever-shifting thing. And so in order to stay in harmony, we have to be listening as well and make skillful adjustments. <clears throat> and so that's another, another thing. So we're, we're listening to the vibrations, the truth that's being communicated to us on, on any uh, level of subtlety um, and, and adjusting the note that we're singing based on what we're hearing and, and keeping that all in, in harmony. And, and by making those constant minute adjustments, like driving, right? This is constant little tiny adjustments. And, and so, so we want to be doing that with our vibratory frequency uh, very carefully this month. And, and all of that in the context of connecting to those aspects of life that we are intentionally trying to nourish 
and, and what arises for us to, to offer our maternal qualities to, and, and then to do, use our, our, our prayer, our voice, to skillfully adapt and adjust to that, to do that in the best way. So that if, that, if that makes sense, linking the, the new moon and the full moon together there. Um, one of the other big things that's happening, or there's two, two other big things that's, that's happening this month. Um, on July 31st and August 1st, these back-to-back -back days, we got two planets changing signs. So on... Um, on July 31st, Venus moves into Gemini, and on August 1st, uh, Mercury moves into Cancer. Now, these are very similar energies, so let's break that down. So Venus, the planet of love, pleasure, enjoyment, uh, romance, uh, moves into Gemini, ruled by Mercury, which is very playful, flirtatious, communicative, curious, um, and, and so that's a very, uh, yeah, it's a very playful, flirtatious energetic where we get the the lover in the realm of like speed dating is is sort of one way to think of of gemini and and so it, it's this invitation to communicate our desires to communicate our heart to to speak to our heart's desire and to, and to say what we're feeling and and get curious about it and ask questions and 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 not be shy gemini is not at all shy and and so when venus gets there it's this very um sort of yeah outgoing uh way of of connecting with the lover and and so so that's that's happening on uh july 31st then the very next day august 1st uh mercury the ruling planet of gemini where venus is now right moves into cancer this this um cancer being the realm of the archetypal mother of um of the heart it really it literally cancer rules the the chest and the heart and and is is again the planet of communication of curiosity of of skill building uh, through through exchange of information moves into the realm of the heart and and so there there's this sort of back to back and a double invitation to share the contents of your heart to communicate what you're feeling and, and that can be both internal or like where you, it, and, and this is, this is the, um, uh, the invitation or the, the suggestion is to do that internal communication first, connect with yourself and, and figure out, Oh, I've got, I've got this feeling and that feeling and that emotion and all that is here. And what does that actually mean? And what do I actually want? And, and, and get that clear first, maybe rehearse your speech, write a few unsent letters first, and then connect with your loved one or your friend or, or whomever it is and, and then be able to speak clearly and concisely and precisely. Um, otherwise, the chance is that you will be uh, uh, thinking out loud and I can speak from personal experience when I'm in a romantic relationship and I'm thinking out loud, that usually doesn't go very well. It usually creates confusion. Uh, because something that just pops to mind, I end up just, it goes straight from, you know, head to mouth. And, and that, uh, that may be confusing. I may not want to have invested that thought with the power of speech. I, I didn't want to give it that power of vibration, right? And, and, and of manifestation. And, but because I hadn't done the internal sorting out first, um, it just came out and all of a sudden it was this confusing thing that was a total diversion from what I actually wanted. But it, you know, that thought was maybe part of the process of figuring out what I truly desire and I'm feeling, but it would have been better to deal with that before figure out like, okay, there's all these things. These are peripheral. This is the real thing. This is what I want to say and emphasize. And, and so, um, Gemini in cancer can help us, uh, sort through all these deep feelings uh, Venus, is, yeah, um, Venus and Gemini will help us help give us the courage and the, the impetus to, to share it and want to talk about it and talk through emotions and, and want be curious, like, Oh, what are you feeling? I'm feeling this. How does that make you feel? And, and have that exchange. And then, yeah, Mercury and Cancer will, will help us sort out our, our hearts and, 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 uh, talk about, talk about within ourselves what's really happening there. Um, 
Um, so that's that's the very start of August. And um, another day I want to call attention to is in the middle of August 16th is this really interesting day where three planets change signs uh, and they all move into fire signs. So um, on August 16th, Mars moves from Pisces into Aries and uh, the Sun and Mercury move from Cancer into Leo. Now, uh, these, are, these are three planets moving from a water sign into a fire sign, which means that they are crossing a Gandanta point, two, two different Gandanta points. There, there are three of these what we call Gandanta points in the zodiac where a water sign meets a fire sign. And, and I'm pretty sure I've spoken about this before. Um, it's, it, they are one of the most transformative, tumultuous places in the sky. Uh, and, and the word Gandanta means knot and, and has to do with like a karmic knot or, or a, a lesson that just is really hard to master. And, and so um, we can divide the zodiac into thirds, right? And so there are four elements that do three cycles throughout the zodiac. And so we start with Aries, fire, Taurus is earth, Gemini is air, Cancer is water. And then we come full circle, water back to fire, which is Leo. And so it does, a, it does another cycle, fire is um, Leo, uh, Virgo is earth, Libra is air, Scorpio is water. And then, and then there's another Gandanta point between Scorpio before it becomes Sagittarius. And, and that's, that's one of these points. So we've got between Cancer and Leo, water to fire, and then Scorpio to Sagittarius, water to fire. And then Sagittarius is fire, Capricorn Earth, Aquarius water, uh, Aquarius air, sorry, Pisces water. And then between Pisces and Aries is the last of those Gandanta points. So, so those are those three points where, where the, the, the four elements have gone through a full cycle and they're about to start over. And, and um, these represent these karmic moments where it's like, you know, if you're about to graduate med school, you've got big exams, right? Because there's this big transition about to happen where you need to really prove that you've mastered this. And, and so with these, with these Gandhata points, it, it brings up this idea that, you know, the first 90% of a project is, is sometimes the easiest, right? Or, or maybe we call it the, the first 80% is, you know, we can just start putting you know, sort of the gross ingredients, putting it all together. And, and a lot of times that's good enough. But, but as we get closer and closer to perfection, to really dialing it in and mastering it, it gets exponentially harder. You know, the last 5% of editing a paper is so tricky. You know, it's making sure that all the commas are in the right place in the bibliography and making sure it's all cited appropriately and that all the grammar is correct and just like all the fine tuning and is, is, is really, uh, uh, difficult, can be a very difficult practice and, and getting it all dialed in just perfectly. Um, the other example that comes to mind for, for this sort of uh, completion of mastery is, is the idea of uh, extraction of natural resources where, um, you know, back in the day, you know, if you're just walking around Texas and you, you know, dropped your pickaxe, uh, a, a geyser of oil might spring up, right? <clears throat> Easy, that's the first 80%. But as we consume more and more oil, <clears throat> it becomes harder to find, harder to extract. It gets exponentially more difficult to get the last, you know, if we're gonna consume every last drop of oil on the planet, please, I hope we don't do that. But if we're, hypothetically, if we're going to, it's gonna get harder and harder and harder and exponentially so until we've consumed that last drop. And and so so that's, that's what these areas of the sky have to do with, is like, you can't, untie this knot until you've fully mastered this area of the zodiac. And so it tends to be this uh, very, there's a lot of tension there. And, and so there's a lot of, a lot of transformation happening and, and this, this intensity of struggle happening at these moments. And so on this one day, we've got three planets crossing Gandanta points from, from water into fire signs. And, and so it, it, it may mark a time when um, there is a bit of a breakthrough uh, in, in, in the external world. Uh, and and it is, it's the sort of thing where 
I have this feeling of like when I have a breakthrough, all of a sudden I've got new inspiration and new energy to like, okay, oh, we fixed that big problem. Now we can, now we can really run with it. And so that's the sort of explosive quality of the fire element in that, in that new burst of life. And, and so, you know, I would invite you to feel into the, the difference between the qualities of the water element and the qualities of the fire element. And, and you can get a sense of what the energetics of that day and the, and the following weeks will, will hold as we move from, you know, having these three planets, especially like Mars, the, the red planet, the warrior who's been in, in Pisces, which is basically the warrior sitting at the beach, hanging out, floating in the ocean, uh, now in his own sign of Aries, um, the cardinal fire sign, very strong impetus to get out and do and work and, and exert effort and, and suffer if necessary in order to accomplish the mission. And um, then we've got the sun into his own sign of Leo uh, with, with Mercury there, right there as well. So that, that becomes, you know, the king on his throne and, and in full power, you know, with his military advisors right there. And, and so um, there is likely to be an increase in intensity of that sort of external action in the world. Uh, but all those planets are operating with with good intelligence, so so I'm I'm quite hopeful. But just be aware that that there is this this shift from water to fire that day and in the in the weeks to follow. Um, so I I wanted to finish with with a note about how everything I'm saying here is very general. This is this is the the, the chart for the world as a whole, right? Like we are this this dot of a planet in space and, and all the planets are moving around us, the stars around them. And, and, and so this is, this is what's happening from our perspective on, on the planet. Now this impacts each individual in unique ways because we are unique individuals. We have different constitutions. We are at different locations on the planet. We were born at different moments and com came in with different, um, a, a different energetic signature and, and so, you know, if we think of your birth chart as um, this like freeze of, you know, you, you come in and you get this, it's, the, the birth chart is like a, a fingerprint, right? And, and so there are these markers and then the, the clock winds around and as the planets pass over the planets where they were when you were born, it goes bing, 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 and, and activates these, these different energies in different ways. Um, and, and they all have different relationships, like characters in a play, moving through different scenes and having different interactions. And, and so, so all this impacts each individual in, in unique ways. And, and so what I'm speaking to is very general and depending on where these signs and planets are in your chart, uh, you are likely to experience these energetic signatures in different ways, uh, with different flavor, in a different area of life. Um, so, you know, there's a big difference between having, um, you know, uh, Venus move into Gemini, and if that's your seventh house, then, well, there's definitely some relationship energetics gonna gonna pop up but if that's your 10th house then okay that's a whole different thing and it's got to do with your career and your work which um you know can be connected to your relationships but it, it's a different focus uh, as opposed to um your first house when it's it's got to do with your more your physical body and you individually so 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 these different areas of life um shift how uh, we interpret the celestial events. So, so just to just in case, just to clarify that that uh, again, I'm speaking very generally, and and your individual chart is just for you, and <clears throat> and uh, astrology is complex, right? It it is a system uh, that can reflect the full complexity of existence of of life, and life is complicated, and so the system is complicated. And so, so that's where I'm doing my best to uh, offer myself forgiveness and gentleness and some grace about the, the mistakes that I inevitably make in this work um, and in the trust that the, the offering as a whole is generative of life and, and nourishing to, to those who, who uh, may benefit from it. So... Um, that's, that's our new moon newsletter for this month. As always, please reach out with any questions, comments, concerns, enthusiasm, anything. I'm, I'm happy to be in connection with you. Uh, I am on Instagram at Ayurveda Dave. 
my website is betadave.com and I uh, look forward to seeing you next month. Until then, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, stay well. Thank you.